so much available that has come from tuning the instrument and then once the instrument is tuned, you know, then the spirit can pour through in, you might say, kind of a prolific way and, and then the tools are available for everybody to, to practice with this, even if they find resistance with the course, the spirit can use other directions and avenues to really bring it through. Yeah, and it stays, <clears throat> it stays in the topic that we are talking about uh, tonight, about using the symbols in order to awaken to love's presence, as truly all those materials that have come through or that have been put together from David Stoke or all those websites or whatever we're talking about as, uh, as what is offered, have really come from the willingness of several wanting to come together and collaborate and wanting to come in the purpose of hearing hearing the Spirit and being in the Spirit and using everything that we do in order to be in the presence of the Spirit and learn about the experience of being done through and to really come in the realization that we are not the doer of this experience. And so it's really beautiful to just see that, that whatever, whatever you are inspired by, you can truly go for it without having a, a, a future goal, but just with only one purpose in mind, which is being in the, in the presence of the Spirit. And let, it, let things happen. You don't have to make it happen. You don't have to have a timing. You don't have to have a future outcome of it. It's like, oh, it's going to be that, or I'm going to do that. No, let the Spirit give you every step all along the way and keep trusting that whatever's meant to happen is going to happen. And by your willingness to really tune in the Spirit and hear His voice, you'll just, you'll just go along and you'll be guided in the most miraculous way. Um, I'm just thinking about uh, David's book, Awakening Through a Course in Miracles. Since I met David, I felt I wanted to, to translate because I speak French, it's my first language. And so I started uh, to proofread one of the books that were translated. And then I really felt since the be beginning I wanted to translate that one. I really felt attracted. But for some reason it took me a while before starting. And I, I realized at some point I was like, oh, why am I not starting? Why am I not doing it? And I started to have those thoughts as if I was beating myself up for not doing something. And, and one day I just truly let that go. I was like, it's gonna happen when it's meant to happen and I don't have to be the one in charge. I feel in my heart that I am willing. I am willing to follow the Spirit. I am willing to be given this project. And it's gonna happen because I feel it in my heart. And then <laughs> I was working on a construction project actually. And at some point I couldn't, I couldn't go there. It's like everything in me just was no, this is not for me, I'm not to go there anymore. And I, I started to hear, I am to stop everything and just concentrating on David's book. That's what I'm called to now. I'm called to just translate. And so I shared that with the friend with whom I was in project. And, uh, and he told me, okay, if it's what you feel, then yeah, just stay, stay where you are and, um, and translate. And it's been an amazing experience. In 10 days, I translated a book of 280 pages, I think. Uh, I was translating for 12, 14, 15 hours a day. I couldn't stop and I wasn't doing anything. I have no idea of what I translated, but I just received it. It's like I couldn't stop because the only thing that mattered for me was that the presence of the Spirit was so strong. And I was reading the word in English and then I would hear it in French and I would just type that. And it just felt like I wasn't even translating David's book. I was channeling the book in French from the spirit. That's how it felt because I didn't even understand necessarily what I was reading in English. Sometimes I, I had no idea, but as I already experienced translating before, I really let go of all my past learning, everything about translation, everything about what I think I knew about a language or how to speak or how to write or even what the words mean or even the idea that I have to have a perfect translation. I have to make sure that this word is exactly that word. And as I had no idea of how to do that and I really stepped back and let him lead the way, I was given the whole book 
firsthand, actually. And I was reading the English more by habit or because it felt good than truly to try to understand what it said in English. It just came through me in, in my language, in what seemed to be my language, in such a clear way that whenever I would read a word and I would not know what it is, I would just really step back. It was really just the experience stepping back and wait. And then I would, re I would receive the word. And at the beginning, I would not trust it totally. It was so beautiful, really, to use your inspiration to see everything that is in your mind, to see where you trust, where you don't trust, what are the corners of the mind where you allow your mind to go, and where you don't want to go, and where you don't want to look. And I was seeing like, oh my god, what if this bird is giving me the wrong word? Or what if I'm hearing wrongly? And so I would just, the beginning, I would just check, like go on the internet and go on Google Translate and put the word and check that. Okay, that's good. And I would do that for a while and then I was like, oh, this is really a waste of time. I just have to trust what's coming through. And so at the end, it was like just this pure flow coming and coming and coming. And there would even be church service at the monastery and I was like, can I not come today because I just, I'm in such a flow. I only want to stay here and translate. And it has never been about translating. It was about allowing the love of God to pour through me, to, to really allowing this flow of the Spirit to take me in and to, to lead me in this deep experience because several days after finishing David's book, I had this profound experience actually where I was driving and suddenly there was a, a deer crossing the road. So I slowed down and then I stopped and the deer stop on the other side of the road and he started to look at me and i don't know why i just really felt i gazing with him so i did i was a gazing with the deer and at some point just everything disappeared and i was like oh my god there is no me there is no him there is no separation there is no one living this life here it's all empty it's like i am him it's like i'm looking at myself right there and that's what I'm talking about, is the spirit is calling you home, is calling you out of the thinking of this world, is calling you out of this world to accept and realize your true nature. And it's gonna use everything that inspires you, everything that you're passionate about to bring you deeper and deeper to this experience where you don't hear about it, you don't have to read about it, you're not believing in it, you live it. And this whole course is about that, about a direct experience of what it's talking about. It's not about studying the course, it's not about reading it and understanding it, it's about coming into this direct experience of God. And that's what we all want. And the course is designed for that. And there are many, many words because the intellect likes the words, but the only purpose is that the understanding you're having will bring you into deeper and deeper awareness where the mind is not, where the ego is not, to the realization of your true nature. And so really it's this allowance of everything that is given you, coming in this joy, allowing the joy to come through and to really let everything fall away, to be in this joy and trusting that, trusting that the Spirit wants that for you, God wants that for you, and that we are so worthy of being in this joy constantly. We don't have to tone it down. We don't have to hide to be happy. We don't have to hide to be joyful. It's just let it up and let it out and extend it because everyone wants to know this joy. Everyone wants to know this happiness. And so I truly feel for me that in my experience, the only gift that we can truly give to anyone is to be fully who we are and extending that. And there's nothing else that, we, that anyone truly ever wants but that, knowing the truth. And that's certainly what a miracle worker does.